Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. I'm Tom Dorsey and I've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about the future of automotive technology solutions. Uh, we really are. And so we've got, uh, I think, some of the most influential thought leaders in the industry, at least when it comes from software tool uh, uh, providers and vendors, as well as implementers. And so I'm really excited to welcome Carolyn Cocolette, who is the founder of Shopware and also the owner and founder of Lush's Garage, probably the largest hybrid specialist in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area and probably in all of California, maybe all of the world. Carolyn Cocolette, welcome very much to the Digital Shop Talk Radio. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. No, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm really, I've been excited since uh, this was proposed. I think, uh, like I said, you know, this isn't going to be a, a sales pitch, whether you're using Shopware, or you're using Auto Vitals, or, or you don't use any of them, or you'll never go digital. Uh, you want to watch this episode because it literally is. We're all going to get in a time machine and we're going to, we're going to take a peek under the, under, into the minds of, of, you know, the influencers that really blaze the trail for where these digital tools that you use every day in your shop uh, are going to take us. And uh, you need to see this information because it's going to help you to make those decisions on what you do and where you go and what's upcoming. And so to put it all together, we've got Frank Scandor joining us from Frank's European in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome back, Frankie. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Frank just happens to be using both of these and has been kind of the guinea pig between Carolyn and Uva uh, <laughs> on figuring out. And really, you know, I mean, it's, it's plays such an important role. We talk a lot about our turbo shops on the show and, you know, through Auto Vitals and without them, we wouldn't be anywhere. And it's these people who are willing to give of their time, the disruption uh, that it causes inside of their operations to really hammer out the bugs and find out what works and give honest feedback. And if anybody knows Frank Scandora, he gives honest feedback. Uh, and so that's really a boon for all of us, right? And again, whether you're in it or going to be in it or, you know, you're never going to be in it. After you watch the show, it's going to change your mind. And of course, as always, welcome Uva Kleinschmidt, founder and CIO of Auto Vitals. I'm, I'm really, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be great. Yeah, me too. Like I was telling Carolyn earlier, you know, uh, I've just been champing at the bit since, uh, since it was proposed because, you know, not only is there some really exciting developments, uh, you know, between the pairing of, of Shopware and Auto Vitals, but also, you know, and I wasn't kidding. I mean, as far as influential thought leaders go, you know, there's a lot of players out there and, I, and I'm not saying, you know, one's better than the other. Well, I am, but um, just uh, I'll, I'll be more diplomatic about it at the moment. But what really ends up happening, if you think about it, is somebody develops some path and it, and it really gets proven out in shops. And guess what? That influences the rest of those providers. And we're all working and competing to bring you the best. And what Auto Vitals is obsessed with, Uva, uh, if you don't mind me saying, is exactly that is. You know, we start out and a lot of times and it took probably four or five years to even shake maybe and we probably still have not 100 percent that that kind of moniker of we're a digital inspection provider. It's really a, a piece of of what I know keeps Uva up at night and that's figuring out how to make shops as efficient as possible to take the busy work away from the average service advisor's day, keep that technician under the hood where he's making money and focus on customer service, focus on keeping them sales up and reaching those goals and not so much focused on running around trying to find out answers to questions that you've done a thousand times uh, and you're going to do a thousand times again. Um, and so if we could kind of, let's jump off right there, I think, and in, in, in set a baseline of saying, you know, and I'd love to hear from both of your perspectives, Uva and Carolyn, is is where do you see your solution that you provide as integral to that goal of providing efficiency and providing tools that, that not add another tool to a service advisor's day, but actually help them to remove tools and remove steps so that they become more efficient. And you know what, Uva, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to go with ladies first. Carolyn, if you can kind of give us a little insight of, of how that drives you in the development of, of Shopware. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think the, the key realization that this industry has come to or is coming to is that paper is not your friend. Paper is your enemy. 
and that anytime you look at a piece of paper, anywhere in your shop, anywhere in your business, you are looking at wasted time and you're looking at potential error. And that's because paper is a human powered technology. Every piece of paper gets moved around your shop by a person. Someone has to look at it. Someone has to print it in the first place. Someone has to track it. And whenever you introduce people, now you're introducing human time and you're introducing human error. And obviously, you know, paper is a technology. Folks that have seen me make presentations, it's, it, it is technology. It's 500 year old technology, printed paper, um, but it is technology. Uh, Fortunately, we have a lot of new technology that's available to us. And, you know, we're creatures of habit. People don't like to change. You've got a system. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you think, all right, cool. Yeah, sure, internet. Yeah, sure, phones. Um, but, you know, I'm comfortable right now. And then you realize as the sort of um, pressure around profitability continues to increase inside of our shops, you realize, oh, shoot, where am I going to get this extra profitability? Where am I going to get that extra efficiency? And the answer is by removing all of that human effort that you're spending, starting with paper. And so what Shopware and Auto Vitals together are able to do is completely remove paper from your shop operations. Um, if you know a vendor walks in and gives you a piece of paper, we're, we're working on that solution for you uh, still. But I mean, basically all the stuff that you are self-generating needs to go away. And by nature of that doing, you are getting rid of all that that human waste that is happening inside of your business. Yeah, you know, it was funny. A long time when I first, you know, started in a career in management, I, I had a, 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 a mentor and he told me, when a piece of paper hits your desk, you handle it one time and you finish it and put it away. Because if you don't, you're going to constantly just be looking at these pieces. Of paper. I have not adopted that, I have to admit, over mm -hmm. all these years. I, I'm a paper shuffler and I hate it. Um, but it's a reality, right? And, you know, Uva, I think what happens is that you get into limitations, right? What do you think keeps those shop owners up at night? Because to Carolyn's point, once I get my operation down and I know how to fix cars and I know how to market, I'm getting people who are coming in and, and I can wave and smile. But but how do how do I, with the, the current technology, without adopting what we're doing here, how do I get that solution? I can't. And that's what spends, I think, a lot of time is you sit there and you rack your brain. How do I get more profitable? How do I make those numbers? But you, but you really can't. It's, a, it's almost like a vicious circle. I think there are two buckets, right? The one bucket is you don't need to change anything because there are established ways of, for example, communicating with a customer and you just take them into a different medium case in point i don't know how long ago it has been invented but maybe there were not service advisors around but you took the customer to the car and showed them what's wrong with it right and you know liability customers in the back shop who cared right and and we just that, that's a best practice which has been established it is a habit we just take that habit and digitize it, right? And, and increase productivity. Other things are completely new and are completely new in process and everything. Case in point, a service advisor can become a flight director type of guy sitting in front of a screen and see what's going on in the back shop, right? That was not possible. It might not even technology. be in the shop. He might be. It might remote. not even be in the shop, right? And that's, you know, we, I don't want to name names, but we have <laughs> shop owners who literally tied their service advisor to the desk to make a point <laughs> for a few days, right? <laughs> with bread and water, at least bread and water. <laughs> I think, I think that's minimum OSHA uh, requirement. And, and so this is the other bucket, right? Things where you can disrupt a, a, a you know, decade long habit for a huge benefit. Just imagine as a service advisor, you're on top of things without running around and asking, how far are you? And then when you're done doing the round, the information you collected 10 minutes ago from the first tab, tech is already outdated, just like paper is mm -hmm. paper is outdated the moment you look at it. Mm -hmm. 
right? It's like mm -hmm. yesterday's news, right? Mm -hmm. It's and and you're in a constant um, attempt to update the information so you can make a decision as a service advisor. And so the clever, smart, seasoned service advisors make assumptions. So they don't need to constantly update the information in the old world. And, and, it, and it might be perceived as them being, you know, not adhering to the process, but all they do is, here is the time I have, here's the skill I have, let's make the most of it. Mm -hmm. And now with the new technology, we can say, you don't need to do that anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You can focus on the valuable work and not the busy work. And, and there's so many examples for how that paid off, but it's still, you need to be convinced changing the habit is, is worth doing. And sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. That's always the case. You know, anybody who's trying to lose weight is going to gain weight in the first week. <laughs> right. You know, and we had last week, actually, we had Mike Bennett on and you guys might remember, you know, we had a great discussion around changing that belief system, right? It really mm -hmm. starts right. there is that once you can believe that you can do it, then you find ways to, to do it the best you can do. I mean, that's really what your staff is going to do for you. Uh, Frankie, I want to bring you in because, you know, Frank is the one who has to take all of this hypothesis and put it into practice, right? And, and you know, Frank, I've known, gosh, you know, six, six years now, probably, and Frank has always been pushing the envelope. A, how do you stay so, you know, far ahead of the curve? Why are, are you doing it? And, and specifically, if you could talk to us, Frankie, a little bit about you know, how, what, what have you noticed? What has been the, the big takeaway from, to Uva's point, right? Is the service advisor actually on their game at the counter, um, you know, uh, focused, dialed in and, and not, you know, distracted and running around like chicken with no head uh, since you've been making this transition? Uh, part of it is, um... It's a touch of insanity, I think. And <laughs> right, well, I knew that. I knew <laughs> so I'm, I'm a visionary. Anybody who's read the book, Rocket Fuel, there's visionaries and integrators. I have all these great ideas, but I need people around me that could take those ideas and either tell me you're crazy, it's going to cost $42 trillion, or yeah, we can do that. Let me create the process on how. And I've always had a vision of being the best, period. How do I be the best at what I do? I don't care if I'm making ice cream, making pretzels, fixing cars. It doesn't matter. How can I be the best? And uh, we were paperless about a year before we uh, signed up with Autovitals. And it was extremely difficult to manage. It was very cumbersome because we had to create a way to be paperless for the reasons Carolyn mentioned. You know, you'd write something on a piece of paper. And if it didn't get lost, you were lucky. If it didn't get something spilled on it, you were luckier. And if it was uh, legible, then everything was really going to be great. So we we looked for ways to solve those problems a long time ago. So to have a, a tool like Auto Vitals to be able to manage being paperless and watching what's going on, like Uva said, you know, I could be here. I'm at home today. I could be here, and I know what's going on in the shop. I don't have to look at cameras. I don't have to look at anything. I just bring up my dashboards and my uh, today's vehicle page, and you know, it's not uncommon for me to take a peek and then, you know, message questions. Why is this? Why is that? What happened here? What happened there? Uh, yesterday, you know, we had a meeting and, and I jumped on my TVP and I looked at a couple of inspections during the meeting. I said, oh, okay, well, what about this? What about that? Is that what we're talking about here? So uh, it, it's just, how do, how can I be the best so I can charge prices that deserve it? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you know, the guys that want to do the 999 all change, the 1999 all change. And, you know, we see it all the time in the Facebook groups. Hey, what are you guys doing for March Madness specials? Hey, what are you guys doing for this special? And I'm thinking, man, it was so long ago that I felt like I needed to drive traffic with cheap prices. And then you create an environment of people just sitting around waiting for that. So how do you become the best? You need the technology and the support of that technology around you to... to just go for it. Just do it. And it's just do it. Right. And 
and I could take my team and I could, and I could explain, listen, here, here's why we do this. And that's an important part of it, right? Because it's really easy. Um, you know, part of my story was when we first signed up with Autovitals, I showed up with all the tablets and I handed everybody a tablet. I says, okay, we're doing digital inspections. And I walked away. Now, how do you think that worked out? And I said, no, 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 we got to get better. I need, I need four pictures of every car that comes in for an inspection. No lie, I had a technician took a picture of four shocks and four tires on every single car. So now we have to really, this is why we're doing this, guys. The, we've said it, the customer used to have to leave work, come down, look up at a greasy, drippy car. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I guess it needs it to, you know, now I could take a picture and attach it to an email and send it to you. Now I could take a picture and text it to you from my personal phone, right? That's always dangerous to having a way to not only communicate electronically, but track it, right? How long have you looked at the inspection? You know, what is the interaction? Can we talk back and forth? you know, with and without open RO. So it's, it's just truly. Hey, Frankie, if you will talk to me a little bit, because you've made, you've changed software several times, right? Um, and, and that's disruptive, but, but, but you're willing to do it, right? And there's a lot of people out there that see, you know, they, they, they see, you know, the benefits that shop work can bring, but they're like, oh my gosh, that's difficult. And it's disruptive. And my, my, my guys and my, uh, how it, it's not easy. And, and I, and I, I have firsthand experience knowing that Frank's had a couple rough patches, you know, sure. um, and, but, but you did it and, and you yep. probably do it again and you will do it again. I, I I'm assuming, right. Uh, if there's a reason to do it, how, if you could give folks a little bit of insight into that, you know, sure. Those so, that might be, you know, have the cold feet, right? Yeah. There's, there's guys that are just so focused on what they have in the past and are looking back here and they can't see what's ahead in the future, right? It's like trying to live your life through the rear view mirror. And, and we had a program that was pretty good, but it didn't really, it wasn't moving forward with the times, right? It wasn't helping me be more digital and it wasn't helping me communicate with customers. You know, Sure, I could click 14 buttons to send a PDF invoice to a customer, that's old. Why are we still doing it that way? Right. I need to really, you need to really up your game shopware. I love the fact that it's interactive where customers can add notes and go back and forth. And these notes become a permanent record on the repair order. Uh, you know, that's like, hello, truly the game changing. So, yeah, so we've made changes and <clears throat> we changed from a shopware system, we, a shop operating system we had for like 10 years of in February of last year. August of last year, we changed again because it was not delivering. And let me tell you, it was painful for the team. And I don't just make those changes on my own. I get everybody involved. We have our weekly meetings yeah. and everybody has a say and nobody said anything about the first proposed change. So when the second proposed change came up, I said, okay, a lot of you guys griped, mumbled and complained about the first change. If you don't have anything to say about this one, you've got nothing to say. So we had a little more input and we do get a little bit of pushback still, but, you know, listen, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. This is why we're doing it. So in order to be a part of the team, we need to make it work together. So, yeah, you know, you know exactly. And, and transparency and, and involving those folks and having regular team meetings and getting that feedback and the honesty is the only way you're going to make it through something like that. But, you know, Carolyn, um, you know, to Frank's point, it seems like, you know, for so long, and, and this is, a, I don't know if this has been your experience. It's definitely been our experience on Auto Vitals is that there's, you know, software technology and technology, I think in general, you know, the, the this industry has been so underserved for so long, you get, folks that are like that it's like oh my gosh the grass is greener and this one thing will pop up and i jump over here and then oh now this thing and then this thing and i'm doing this leapfrog <clears> type <throat> thing if you can talk to us because i know that you work to kind of eliminate the need to do that into the future right and incorporate a lot of the things that are requested and required through your experience as, a sh as an awesome shop owner and then the feedback that you get from from the market and folks like you know and having discussions like this mm -hmm. but also um being able to provide which you know that we're going to talk a lot about that today here is 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 the future needs 
so that mm -hmm. you don't see it as, you know, oh, the next best thing. And here I go jump through this hoop and then jump through this hoop. If you can talk to us a little bit about how that influences your development and, and really, you know, your creativity when it comes to some of the, the functionality and features that you've built into shopware that are really impressive. And I think that they're game changing. Like Frank said, game changing. That's That was his words, not mine. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Um, and thanks, Frank, for, for um, obviously all your support and, and certainly your perspective as one of the industry's top operators. I mean, it's just, it's awesome to be able to, to work with folks that have uh, a ton of insight and we love to, you know, hear from you and, 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 and work for you. <clears throat> um, you know, forever shops have been like, wow, I can decode a license plate to a VIN. Isn't that amazing? Like, wow, I finally had like a significant leap forward from 17 digits to seven digits. And like, that's been, that's been the extent of like SMS innovation right. for like 10 years. <laughs> and guess what? Everyone's like, oh, and I get it for free. Well, guess what? You don't get it for free. And, uh, Uva, if you want to talk about that, I'll, I'll leave that one for you because I know you and I have a shared point of view on, on shop data. But, um, and, and that I think segues to a different conversation that we were potentially having around, you know, you get to use Google and Facebook for free, but it's not really free. Um, but it, needless to say, there obviously has been a ton of innovation in software technology, in cloud technology, and shops have just been left out in the cold and you and you wonder okay well why is that and it's it's actually and, and, and I've presented on this also so this is not a secret I, I think it's been deliberate I think that the industry likes to keep us uh, down I don't think that you know empowered uh, capable shops uh, have been necessarily what the industry has wanted I think if, if shops are dysfunctional then vendors get to keep more of their money and customers get to keep more of their money so having shops, you know, have a, have a seat at the table hasn't necessarily been welcome. So we're really excited to be able to enable shops to be able to, you know, stand up and say, you know what, we deserve uh, more money. We deserve more competitive tools. We could deserve more competitive pricing. And, uh, and that's where the industry is going. I mean, self-driving cars are not going to be self-fixing cars. We are a critical component. We are the hand that rocks the cradle. And so getting us to where we need to be is something that I am particularly passionate about. And so one of the things that, you know, we have felt strongly about from a, from a solutions perspective has not been to just reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to make, you know, X legacy system back in the cloud. We're actually trying to rethink what shops are doing in a cloud-based environment. You see that with all different aspects of our, of our system in terms of how the repair order works, in terms of how part pricing works. Um, in terms of how you know communication with the customer works, so um, just trying to not uh, take an incremental step, but to really make the leap, and that is tricky, right? Unfortunately, when you have to rethink, it takes more effort than just saying, "Oh, wow, gee!" Instead of typing in a VIN number, I can type in a license plate. That's obviously better. Um, but what's the long-term solution, right? The long-term solution is to type in no numbers at all. <laughs> yes. And so how do we get, how do we get there is something that um, certainly Shopware wants to deliver and is delivering. And um, it's awesome to be able to work with uh, someone who shares that point of view with Uva, who has been, you know, at the helm doing this himself for uh, longer, certainly than I have. So, so Uva, what are your thoughts? Where do I start? <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> um, no, no, I mean, this is a really interesting topic. Why has this industry been underserved? And, and I want to, I, I mentioned it so often, but it stuck with me and almost um, planted doubt in doing auto idols, to be honest, that one of the industry experts told me, Larry Moore, mm -hmm. if you think you can deliver a software to all of us, you're wrong. We're all anarchists. I, I will never forget this. Larry was like customer number three or something like that. Right? Yeah, here you are. And <laughs> and, uh, and and so it, it, it's not. Uh, there's one portion in really where you know one of the most said statements in the Facebook group or in discussions is I know how to run my shop and we have a special way. 
that's probably the number one statement, right? And so, although that's true, the question is how much of this can be opened up to a standard procedure where you really just create efficiency and effectiveness and how much of it is really creating your brand and should be special and not, as Frank said, chasing the discount traffic, right? And I think that is what every shop should make a decision about. I believe there is a clear, and, and I, it's not that I believe it, the numbers have proven that to us in the last three to four years that, you know, shops starting with 600,000 revenue uh, with outer vitals and four people turn now 2.3 million with seven people. Can you believe this? I mean, what business can say that? That a change in process and an addition of tools allows an employee to create a hundred thousand dollar revenue more over the course of three, four years. That's the potential we are talking about. And in a lot of times doing less cars. I mean, you know, yes. And, you know, we used to like to say it was, it was like adding a, a, a bay or two bays to your shop without having to do the construction, right. Without having to go out and buy land. Because it's really when you break it down, it's it's what it gives back uh, when you when you do that. And when you realize those gains, it is like adding a whole nother shop to your shop sometimes. Right. And, and that and that requires an honest analysis of how you do the operation today and how it could be done in the future. And and, and shop owners and shop teams are willing to do that have reaped the benefits in the last few years, you know, in multiple times, right? If well, I look at, if I look- made that apparent, right? Once we right. got into this COVID uh, situation, mm -hmm. it right. really drew a clear line. Yeah. Yes. I mean, just looking at Frank's TVP, which I do from time to time, blows me away. Oh, okay. What he is able to process, right? Um, I know the parking lot is full and overflown that's probably the only limitation <laughs> yeah uh, muted. people tend to have thank you muted people's... sorry about that and technicians right if we could get right more guys and and we're going to take a hard look at apprenticeship but that's we're limited to that but you're absolutely right I'd, I'd be able to really just blow it up yeah exactly so, and, and, and even to use the word process Right. We are now using this and like it's normal. Just go five years back. If I had said something about process in a presentation to shop owners, they would have looked at me, you know, what professor from what planet is this guy? Thought it was another credit card processing pitch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's, an and that's an interesting point too, right? Because process people product, right? Our product is our service. Our people are, are what they are. But if you don't have a process, it's just a free for all. And just how do I write up a car, right? I did a training video that I share with everybody. It's on our YouTube channel, how to write up a car, how to point out damage without insulting the customer and looking like an idiot, how to recommend the services by time and or mileage at drop off, how to take a quick peek at tires and wiper blades. That's a process. And then when you just, it, when you make it the process for everybody and it's non-negotiable if you don't do it, you can't lose. You just really can't lose, right? So it, it's it's really good stuff. It's well, and it was so like important. what I was saying earlier is that, you know, that, that, that information's out there. People are going to find it. And if they find it there, but you didn't tell them and, you know, you didn't want to hurt their feelings or whatever it is, you know, your, your doctor doesn't pull any punches when, when they're going to tell you, they lay it out there. Right. And you appreciate that. You might not like the news, but at least, you know, and now I can make a decision on what I'm going to do next. If I got to go find it on, you know, line or somebody tells me afterwards, Hey sucker. Oh my gosh. There's, that's the last time you see that. You just see dust. <laughs> there's never coming back right you know we refer to 10x all the time like you know you'll you'll adopt a solution when it becomes 10x better than your existing solution that's sort of the the you know activation 
uh, energy that justifies the transitional cost. And, uh, you know, you talk about a shop going from 600K to 2.3. I mean, that's, that's not even 10X, right? So like um, what we're talking about is essentially offering shops innovation that allows them to do so much more with what they already have or less. And <clears throat> you might think, okay, well, well, why is that the case? Like that, that's impossible. And what you realize is that anything that gets done inside of your business is limited by the capacity of time and by how much can a human do between their ears in that amount of time, right? And when your shop is running based on the best technology we have, which is the you know, space between your ears, yeah, sure, it's gonna get done, right? Human intelligence is incredible. Like literally, we're still trying to figure out how to drive cars with machines and we can drive a car and listen to music and eat french fries i mean we're amazing right yeah. we can do so much between our ears but when you spend time doing stuff between your ears that could be better spent done by the machine then all of a sudden you're cheating yourself you're wasting that very precious time doing something that that doesn't need to be done by you and then you're only able to get so much done in your day the more you can delegate stuff to the machine, which oftentimes will actually do a better job than you when you get into just like really pure processing stuff, like truly what computers are for, um, like tracking time. It's way easier for a machine to track time. I mean, you can guess what time it is right now. You could guess how much time has elapsed, but you're not gonna be nearly as accurate as your phone. So you can actually like uh, admit your limitations and say, okay, there's only so much time in the day. There's only so many people we have in house. Let's figure out how much we can give to the machine and let us do the stuff that only humans should do, which is like talking to a customer about their priorities and like, you know, what, what do they actually care about in terms of the maintenance of their vehicle or repair of their vehicle, then you're able to get so much more done. And PS, your customers are going to be way happier because you're going to be available to them. Yes. We've talked about like phone skills and like phone uh, time and answering and phone traffic. And there's been so much emphasis on the phone. The phone can only happen between somebody's ears, right? And uh, wow. so spend the time on the phone when you really have to and give everything else to the machine. And that's how you get from, you know, 1X to 10X. Now, that's such a brilliant point, right? Is that really is our job is to focus on the customer's needs, right? Not running around trying to answer, you know, every question under the sun, um, you know, and, and I, I tend to wake up every morning at 544. So I, I think I am as, as accurate as a clock. Um, but Frankie, I wanted, I wanted to touch on a point Carolyn made right now. Do you think that it was, cause I thought it was brilliant is that it's the comfortable thing, right? Once I have this figured out this process, it's the comfortable thing and why a lot of times, and I, I'm not trying to pick on the front counter, but the front counter tends to resist these changes so much because, it, you know, I've already got it figured out, right? We're doing great. And it's really comfortable where I'm at right now. What are the seven most dangerous words to an organization? We've never done it that way before. <laughs> so uh, it, it, listen, everybody hates change. Mm -hmm. The only constant in life is change. So let's just move forward figure out a way to make it less painful because complacency is what destroys innovation and destroys progress. Okay. I remember sh killing myself to do a half a million dollar year in sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it's by implementing the processes, by being innovative, by accepting and, and embracing the technology to make it easier. And it is, the, there's a learning curve, right? There's a learning curve when I install a new software. There's a learning curve, you know, when AutoVitals uh, updates. There's a learning curve when my MacBook updates. There's a learning curve for everything we do, okay? Um, I will not get an Android phone because I refuse to go through that learning curve. So there's things that we make decisions to do. Just do it. Let's just focus on getting it done. We can sit around and complain all day long about how hard it is and we never did it that way before. And I don't understand. Rah, 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 rah. Or just get better. Let's go. Make it happen. You know, and that's a brilliant point, right? Because these things become ubiquitous, right, Carolyn? It, it's like if I, I have an experience where I'm going to update my Apple, you know, my, my iPhone, or I'm going to search for information in Google 
and and then if your information comes to me in some completely different you know format and you know i got to start reading from the bottom to the top instead of left or the right you know it's eh, i you know i because it really does influence the way that we're living our digital lives nowadays it really kind of follows this kind of set pattern of expectations and it's across industries right and it's like you 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 do you find yourself you know, thinking about how do you take that larger experience and, and kind of, you know, forge it into your product so that you give the same flavor a lot of times. So it feels comfortable. It feels familiar. This is kind of the way I've been doing. I do this on my phone. Oh, look, I'm doing it right here. And it's natural now. Yeah. So, I mean, certainly switching shop management systems. I mean, if Uva you know, wanted to build a shop management system, he would have done it already. He's just smarter than me, right? He's just like, you know, that is, I will, uh, why would you go and do that? Um, which is why we love this partnership, right? Is that, you know, Shopware can, can you know, calculate the sales tax and manage inventory and, you know, Uva can handle the the technicians inspections in the back of house and the, and the tracking and all that good stuff. And, you know, it's best of both worlds, but um, the, the, the challenge of actually moving from a legacy system to a new shop management system uh, is inherent, right? And there is a network effect. I'm already, I'm already on an iPhone. I don't wanna leave an iPhone. I'm already on, you know, insert legacy shop management system name. I don't wanna leave legacy shop management system. Um, but there eventually becomes a 10X incentive that, okay, if I switch, all of a sudden I'm gonna unlock all these additional benefits and now it's worth it to me to figure it out, to figure out you know, how I need to adapt to that thing. And it's, it's actually not the customer's problem. It's our problem as a service provider to figure out how to justify that transitional pain and to communicate that to you and deliver that value quickly so that you get onto shopware and then very quickly your parts GP goes from you know, 50% to 60% and you go, I did it. That was why I did all that. Um, and we're excited to be able to, to tell that story over and over again. And more and more people are obviously, you know, uh, making the switch because they've understood that it worked for their friends and it's proven. And there is a component to which you can always say, oh, yeah, it does X, Y and Z. But if it's not a robust solution, like, for example, when we're talking about taking the work out from between your ears and letting the machine do it, if the machine screws it up, you're going to take it back. You're not going to let the machine do it again. So when we deliver solutions, we have to deliver solutions that are robust and actually better than, than what you're doing yourself. What's interesting from like, a, I think um, a product perspective is that, you know, Uva has spent a lot of time studying technician workflows and has created a tool that um, automates technician workflows and, and delivers very consistent quality out of technician behavior. Uh, from a shop management standpoint, we very much um, have to operate within those special snowflakes, all those different shop owners that have their own flavors for how they wanna you know, track their businesses, report their businesses, whatever, send their businesses to QuickBooks, et cetera. How do they wanna communicate to the customer? How do they wanna put the services together? Yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and that, um, that does require great, basically creating a tool that is, that is universal, that allows folks to basically customize and apply to whatever their facility, their size, their priorities, whatever that happens to be. And so Shopware does try to provide, you know, kind of a, um, a customizable solution. Actually, if you, if you look at the tool, it doesn't say Shopware anywhere on it, except in the URL bar. I mean, it's basically your tool. We wanna make it feel like it's your shop, it's your solution. And we're trying to get out of the way. Uh, and so <clears throat> by allowing folks to really kind of fit it to their own needs, obviously it allows them to feel that much better. I didn't have to reinvent my shop to be able to implement this tool. I basically just said, what is my shop? How do I make this tool facilitate you know, my needs? So that's something that you know, we feel strongly about. And then in terms of just you know, training and getting people to accept new tools. I mean, it, that's a work in progress, right? It's, it's all of us are working on trying to connect and convince the other person that we're talking to as best we possibly can, right? The human interface remains the greatest mystery. And so um, certainly, you know, we have a, a pretty robust uh, sales and support process to, to reach our customers and let them know, you know, how they're going to make this change. But that, you know, that's something that we're working on all the time. Yeah, you know, Bill put a, I, I want to bring this in, Bill put a funny comment in, and it's so apropos 
Um, it says, you know, if you do not change, you will end up with change. It will just be the jingle in your pocket type. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that brings up a really good, you know, point is that, and kind of what we were talking about before is, is that, you know, a lot of times this, a lot of technology is out there and it's just kind of floating around for free, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you, know, you use Google for free all day. And, and, and these other things. And, and I remember in the beginning of the internet, cause you know, I'm, I'm old like that, but it was a big struggle on to figure out how to monetize something, you know, oh, I, I can see the weather. What do you mean? I'm gonna pay a dollar to look at the weather. I look outside the window. I don't need to, you know, and, and so there was this kind of this struggle to monetize this thing. But when we're talking about somebody going from 600 K to 2.3, when we're talking about you know, reaching efficiency and productivity levels uh, at your counter or from your technicians that you never uh, could could accomplish before, that has a lot of value to it. And so how do you justify, and, and you know, this is a question to both of you, um, I'll let you arm wrestle over who, who takes it first, Uva and, and Carolyn, but how do you, you know, get in there and justify that, you know, because a lot of times it can't just be metrics, right? Because, oh, you know, numbers, oh gosh, you know, that can all be fake and I don't believe it. You really have to provide the value, the tangible value uh, to, 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 you know, establish and defend that price point. Let me go first. Yeah, sure, sure. Of course. Frank won. But, <laughs> uh, let me tell you why, because I can, re- I can remember back in the early days when we used to write inspections, right? That I, I don't know, all my, every car in my shop gets inspected and I was challenged to prove it. So I pulled all the repair orders out for the entire week and get all this paper flying all over the shop to learn that not every car got inspected. And I found that very infuriating because my expectations weren't being met. I said, please inspect the cars. You said you inspect the cars. We're not inspecting the cars. So now I can justify a a financial investment in a software that lets me measure it so that when I'm in a meeting with with an employee and I said, look, 72% 72% inspection rate. You promised it'd be over 95%. And I stopped talking. And it changes everything. So I'll let the smart people go next. Uh, okay. I, I, would, I would like to talk about change a little bit because it, it can come across as, dang, there's this fear of change and fear driving something is not always a great feeling, right? Mm-hmm. I, I love the following statement, get comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? Change can be fun, right? It is for me. So, um, you know, I had so much change in my life from whatever, don't get, get me started. But the moment you have learned the first time, even if there was failure on the, on the path, that there is value at the end, you actually want to do it again, Mm -hmm. right? So there is this, you want to change because you should ask why, why should I change, right? And what's the, what, what goal can I achieve? And this industry is so amazing in, in peer connections where owners talk to other owners, sometimes even to the degree that oh yeah, sign me up because I talk to X, Y, Z and I want to achieve the same result as him, right? Um, So so the point I'm trying to make is really embrace change as a positive, although little uncomfortable, but be comfortable in just embracing change, whatever happens. And then after a while, you start looking for the next opportunity and you know it's uncomfortable, but you know, the last 10 times it paid off eight times, you know, or better, you, you, you can only win. And and so you, and and if you make that a constant habit of um, not expect it to be perfect on the first day, but invest and, and chase your goal, I think, the sky is the limit. That that is what excites me about this industry. There is so much potential, right? Numbers, 66% of all technician findings are not being sold to the customer. Are you kidding me? Right? And that has different reasons. And 
we can analyze them. And so that is what, what Tom called the obsession, right? We want to identify those things and eliminate them because the opportunity is just so big, so big. And, but it requires to look at the process, to look at the, to accept change. It will not happen by a shiny penny product which shows up and promises the world the next day. Not going to happen. Yeah, and that's really the mark of the true innovator, right? Is that right. is that I have that vision and I have that goal in mind, and I'm just going to go get there. And and just the influences from the past or the naysayers or whatever it might be, you don't really allow them to to cloud that vision, and then you you get you just get there. And it, that's what really changes a market, right? I mean, we would have never had cell phones if we listened to, I'm sure, you know, the people going, oh, you know, who's going to drive or who needs to be outside to make a phone call, you know, what if, what if it's raining? <laughs> and so, but there was that other person who went, no, you're kidding me, right? Um, and, no. and, and if I may, there is a clear, you can call it pressure or opportunity that motorists, we as consumers make decisions now differently, right? We, we value transparency so high because we have been given opportunities starting with Amazon probably um, way back to make decisions without needing the so-called expert on the phone, right? Who at the same time applies sales pressure and I have to decide is that because he wants to educate me or is it because he wants to sell me, right? And, and, and we are all exposed to that and, and and that is a change we cannot stop. I, I remember a customer way back asking us, how dare you sending uh, recall information automatically to my customers? I am the source of the communication to my customers. Right, and I was thinking, uh, are you using Google? <laughs> Have you ever heard of the internet? <laughs> right, and, and so, so that has changed dramatically how, how we, uh, um, approach things and this is just the beginning right oh, and yeah. anyway i'm sorry I, I got a little philosophical but um so the beauty back to this um podcast is out of idols and shopware so thank you carolyn had you. An, an amazing uh, collaboration process right it's it's not normal or standard unprecedented that point of sale uh, vendors and us work in such a collaborative way and, 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 and we could make requests and they were challenged and changed and implemented, right? That's typical collaboration. So I really want to thank you. That makes me super, um, positive and, and uh, for the future. Thank you. That's a pleasure to be able to work with you. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're obviously uh, proud to not only provide our product, but be able to leverage our product to the rest of the industry. <laughs> right. uh, we have our own problems to solve. And then we want everyone else who is solving other problems to be able to additionally reach those customers. And what's so critical about shop management software or systems and, and why I'm passionate about solving that problem and not something else uh, is that <clears throat> it's the center of the business, right? It's the system of record. It's the system of engagement. That's correct. And so to the extent we can create an ecosystem that allows shops to meet all their varied needs with that one connected environment is, 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 is not only our mission, but also absolutely critical to the future of the industry. So, you know, thanks for for bringing your products to, to our customers. Let me say as a customer, it is refreshing to have you guys working so well together. And, and, I, and I know I'm a big mouth, so I tend to get attention of people. But that aside, it is very exciting to, to see the working together and the innovation and the changes that are possible and quickly, right? And it's like, Uve and I, we've been working together for years and, you know, 
he's he'll reach out to the other companies and they're like no mine mm. right like a three-year-old three-year-olds don't go here mature people go here let me show you what i've got and what have you got let's work together right three-year-olds go mine and and it's very refreshing as a customer to be involved with it on both ends thank you guys you're welcome so what can you describe the benefits you saw through the switch and now with the new integration um um, I hope that's okay. I'm not. Oh yeah, yeah. that was going to be my next. Building you. We got about ten minutes left, and I was hoping. You know, I promised folks a crystal ball, and I want to talk a little bit about <laughs> what's happening now. And why is this so strong? Because that's what we do, right? Is we're not really picking winners or losers here. We, you know, we like to, you know, work with the best in the of the breed, so to speak, because that gets us to the next level. And and so I know a lot of folks want to hear, you know, from Frank is is what does that look like today? But also I'd like to, if we could a little peek under the hood of what's coming uh, so just to have the ability uh, in my mind you guys went from zero to working together very quickly right and and i don't know if it's the same you know behind the scenes for you but to me it seemed like it went very quickly so i was able to um make a commitment to shopware and within a couple of months make the switch and even though not everything was in place yet, it was completely satisfactory to me to be able to start my workflow management. I, I took a peek here just a second ago, 169 sold hours right now. That's not waiting for parts. That's not waiting for authorization. That's not waiting for drop off. So uh, to know that at a glance to me is critical, right? And now with the canned jobs, it's like next level, right? So the system we used before, um, it just was too general. And, and one of the things I love the most about shopware is where I can go into, have a car up on my screen go, Hmm, let me see. What have I done in the past on a car like this? Oh, look, I did do that exact job. And there was a service bulletin and here's the information that I can apply. And it takes seconds to do that compared to anything else out there. And to, to see that all come together from a shop owner, man, it's just exciting. So then what's next? Is it going to tell you that that, that, that uh, situation exists without you even having to go look for it? Yep. I think so. Right. So, and that's, that's, ex that's exactly right. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's that 10 X Carolyn that you were talking about before that's 10 X right there. And that's just, I just can't wait for that, for that database to. Uh, yeah, we have, I mean, that has been one of my, you know, dream projects all along, because if you really look at how you run a shop, every shop behaves like I opened yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right. first every, nice job. Right. Every estimate is written up from, from, from scratch. Really? There yeah. has to be better ways. And, and, and let's just be clear. The service advisor, no matter what digital technology we're going to implement is still the focal point for the customer. There's no doubt. It's just the way the information is being presented and, and the family and football talk trust is accompanied by the transparency trust. Right. And, and if, if we look at our data, there is still so much to do in terms of recommendations by the tech don't show up on the estimate. Mm. To use one to use one KPI, right? Um, decline but, but, jobs will never be presented again, or will be presented through a generic service reminder without filling the context three months later remember we talked about this and here's the picture of the dirty air filter or whatever it is right there's so much more to do and uh and that's exciting and i want to say too with the being able to map every single recommendation to a canned job in shopware and auto vitals and then just go update work order and the entire estimate gets started for us we still got to verify parts on labor and I don't think that'll ever change. And, and, but just to have it in there because now nothing gets missed. Right. Before you didn't have that. And it was like, okay, let me 
put let me export what I do have can jobs map for and let me go back and look at the est- the inspection again oh wait the phone rang oh wait you know somebody just walked in oh wait you know technician said come on let's go have a smoke and all these interruptions take that problem away now update the work order and all of those jobs create the a, a new recommendation nothing's getting missed So I'm just looking forward to the day where it, it says, oh, look, you did this job on that car three months ago. Is this the same? Yes or no? Yeah, because nice. I mean, that's really the game, right? Is this, it's inform it's, there's so much, that information's out there, but it's so time consuming to grab it. And if I can just deliver that information and especially the most important thing, because then you can get, you know, analysis paralysis yes, or whatever, sir. overload of information, the AI there, the smart the way is just to tr- be able to make that decision on what information you need to see right now. You can still get that rest of it and you can go do d- dig down to the next level if you need to, but here's exactly what you need to know and, and when you need to know it to, to be as most efficient as possible, getting it in and getting it done. And, and if you can deliver that, right, that's the, that's the best, the better mouse trap, right? Because then, you know, Carolyn, if you if you could, you know, talk to us a little bit about um, where where does it go from there, right? Because it, you know, it's it's not like it's going to end. You know, I mean, you look at these, you know, you look at the Olympic athlete or you look at a high caliber sports team, you know, and they're they're at the pinnacle. They've made the world record that nobody else has ever been able to do. Well, they don't take tomorrow off. They're going to do it again. And how do you now? You really start to have to slice hairs to figure out how do you eat that last bit of a possibility out of, you know, my operation. Um, you know, how do you incorporate that? How does that influence you in, in your, in your development? So the, you know, uh, the paradigm for shop management historically has been, we all just copy each other and, you know, we steal each other's customers and we kind of already know what the end game is. It's the thing that lets the human make the decisions better and better and better versus a wholly different approach, which is stop having humans have to make all the decisions. Okay. And that's what Shopper does differently than any other system uh, available in market. And so, you know, what Uva is describing and and what we're all kind of describing is, okay, we've got these dots. We have the things that we have to get done in the journey of a car's visit or the journey of running a business. And what we start to do is actually start to connect those dots together with the technology, right? So right now, Auto Vitals has got this connection where the technician's inspection auto-populates recommendations onto the repair order. Um, You know, Shopware's uh, frontier right now is optimizing customer approvals. So we already have a, a digital customer experience where they can come to the RO and you know, look at the details and approve work uh, and and chat with the shop and so on and so forth. Well, essentially optimizing that to get to yes, better and better so that it's not up to your advisor's phone skills. Now, obviously, if you want to follow up and talk to your customer, that's great. You certainly can. No one's, no one's taking the phone off anybody's desk. Um, but if the software can do a better and better job, like producing that value that gets that customer yes, just like Amazon allows customers to click yes all day long, then great. And actually, we have already shown that customers are 12% more likely to click yes uh, with Shopper than when you just simply call them over the phone. So that's a pretty compelling difference in terms of sales. Uh, Beyond that, it's auto fulfillment of parts. And then it's auto fulfillment of schedule. So that essentially that labor inventory and that parts inventory components can be, be managed by the system. And then obviously, you know, there's less and less uh, management that has to happen between people's ears. And there's a lot of different ways that we've set up the, the, the system to be able to facilitate that, the data structure, the way that it understands parts flows, the way it understands labor capacity are unique. So anyway, we're very bullish on all of that. Uh, certainly, you know, ultimately shops have their own priorities in terms of, you know, what kind of cars they work on, what kind of margins they expect, what's their market, what's their, you know, rent, what do they need to pay their employees, all that, that varies. And so the profitability piece and, you know, it's not just like press the button and it says, make me money, make me money. Like at some point you have to tailor the, the, the system to your business. Um, but for the business to be able to run with less and less human capacity is like obviously uh, where we're headed. So those are sort of the, the next steps for us. 
Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting times, right? Because that just mm -hmm. leads to that's what you were born to do. That's what people open their shop to do. And that was to fix cars and serve the community, not run around and deal with all of this, you know, crazy, uh, you know, regulation and information and all of these people uh, distracting you and taking your time all day. It really lets you get back to, to doing what you love. And I think mm -hmm. that's awesome. And, and don't confuse what Carolyn said with less human interaction doesn't mean we need fewer people to get the work done. That means okay. we could use the people we have more efficiently, more effectively, and, yeah. and with less pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, doing the stuff you love doing, not the stuff you mm -hmm. hate. <laughs> That's usually what you hate. There's, there's so much like discussion about AI and like, and like, like that, that technology is going to make, you know, is going to like take our lives away. Like we weren't going to, we won't have jobs. And if it's anything, it's like, we're going to have more substantive jobs because we're going to be able to do the stuff that's uniquely human mm -hmm. and not do the stuff that, you know, humans don't need to do and, and don't even necessarily do very well. So it's, it's really good news. You know, this innovation and this, the progress that we're making is actually really good news. That's a brilliant point. I mean, Hey, I've seen star Wars and they all look happy <laughs> when people are shooting lasers at them and stuff, but you know, Future looks pretty cool. <laughs> Man, we're out of time, uh, which is a bummer because I could probably do another hour on this. I mean, we're just kind of getting the surface scratch. So if you didn't get your question answered or you didn't chat it in, shame on you. But no, seriously, take it to the Facebook forum. Let's continue that discussion there. Uh, I know a lot of people got, got their gears turned, and uh, I thought this was a fantastic discussion about, you know, two, like I said, very influential thought leaders uh, in this space uh, and really coming together to the benefit of Frank Scandura. And I, I don't know how that could uh, get any better, right, Frankie? You're absolutely right. And, and I feel privileged to, to be a part of the testing process and helping this become a better product for everybody. Thank you both very much. We love you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, definitely. And for everybody who's out there, you know, uh, helping out in that, for, in that form and turbo groups and anybody participating in those chat forms and whatever, whatever side of the fence you're on, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. We couldn't do without you. Uh, tune in next Wednesday, same time, same place. We're going to be doing another uh, edition of Who Wants to Be a Digital Shop Millionaire? And then uh, the week after that, we're going to be talking with the folks from Bay IQ, talking about a little merger thing happening, what's on the horizon there, talking loyalty and uh, customer retention and kind of a little peek under the hood about what's coming in the future of that side of it because they're both as equally important. Uh, uh, to the success of your business. So really excited. Mark your calendar for those two episodes coming up. Uh, and as always, chat in your suggestions, email us, get on that Facebook forum. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us uh, uh, when do you want to come on the show and tell us your story as well. Like these brave individuals here today have done. Really appreciate your time, folks. That was a fantastic uh, episode and it really gave a lot of insight. And I think got a lot of gears turning uh, with folks out there who are looking to make these decisions and see what's coming. Uh, so thank you very much. You well, guys. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Uba. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Have a great day. Bang. Until next Wednesday, get out there and make some more money. <laughs> That's right.